Okay, so here's some example problems related to um, everything but the heat transfer process. I figured I did enough example problems in the heat transfer process before that you don't really need to see any more. So I'm going to focus in a couple of examples on Hess's law and then um, one on just enthalpy transfer and then a couple on the thermodynamic stuff. So here's my overall reaction. Okay, and I've got, um, it wants me to calculate the delta H for this reaction. So again, my process is make sure everything's on the correct side first. So I notice that calcium carbonate is on the right down here, but on the left up here. So I'm going to cross this one out and rewrite it. Okay, and when I do that, I multiply my delta H by negative 1 to flip its side. Now, what else? I need my calcium ions on the left, but they are currently on the right. So I'm going to get those flipped like this. And again, multiply my, re my reaction by negative 1. And now the only other thing I need to do, now my ions are all on the correct side, but I just noticed that I added a calcium hydroxide to the right here and to the right here, those are not going to cancel out. So I'm actually going to flip this reaction right now because I can see that it's going to cause me problems later. So in reality, I ended up flipping all three of my reactions. Okay. Oh, and also that also helps me because I need to have my water on the right and that puts my water on the right up here. Okay, now I double now that everything's on the correct side, I want to double check that I have the correct number of everything. One calcium, good. Two hydroxides, good. One CO2, good. One calcium carbonate, good. And one water, good. So now all I have to do is go through and cancel out everything I don't need. Well, I don't need a calcium oxide. I don't need a calcium hydroxide. I need everything else. CO2 yields calcium carbonate plus water. And I can see that my delta H is just simply the flip of all of these numbers here. So it's going to be negative 1 times 178.1 plus negative 1 times negative 65.31 plus negative 1 times negative 16.2, negative 96.59, negative 96.59 kilojoules per mole. And again, it's kilojoules per mole simply because that's what was given in the problem. Now it says calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of gaseous diborane B2H6 using the following thermochemical reaction information. So remember, enthalpy of formation means elements combined together to form a compound. So my overall reaction is going to be elements combining together to form a compound. Now obviously I need to balance this. 2, 3, and then B2H6. Okay, and they want me to find the delta H for this overall reaction. Okay, so again, make sure everything's on the correct side. My boron is on the left, my hydrogens are on the left, my B2H6 is on the, oh, no, that's not right. So let's flip this, B2O3 plus water yields B2H6 plus 3O2 multiplied by negative 1. Okay, because remember, whatever I do to the reaction, I have to do my delta H. Now I'll get everything to be the correct number. Two bonds needed, but I have four. So I'm going to divide everything in this reaction by two. Okay, so this becomes three halves oxygen and one B2O3. I need three, half, uh, three H2s. Okay, well this is a little bit of a problem because I got two. So... If I think about this, what number times 2 gives me 3? And the answer is 1.5. So I'm going to multiply everything in this reaction by 3 halves. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 halves, 
I get 3. 3 halves and 3. And I multiply this by 3 halves. And yes, I can do that. I can basically do anything I want as long as I do whatever I do the reaction, I do the overall. I do the delta H. Okay? And I need 1B2H6, and I've got my 1B2H6. So let's uh, cancel out everything that's on both sides of the reaction. So I've got, um, I have 3 halves of an O2 plus 3 halves of an O2 is 3 O2s, because 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3, and I have 3 O2s there, so that's perfect. I have 1 B2O3 on the right, 1 B2O3 on the left. I have three waters on the right. Oops, there I forgot to transfer the number across, and I have three waters on the left, and those cancel out, and I circle everything that's left over and rewrite it. Okay, so to find my delta H, my reaction, I'm going to take the delta H for reaction one divided by two plus three halves of delta H for reaction two plus the opposite sign delta H for reaction three. Put it all into my calculator. Negative 2509.1 divided by 2 plus negative 571.7 times 1.5 plus positive 2147.5. I think you guys understand that I don't need to multiply by negative 1 there equals 35.4 kilojoules. Again, unit is based on the problem, and it's positive, so that's an endothermic process. Okay, given this information, use Hess law to calculate delta H. Again, process doesn't change. I'm going to walk you through the steps one by one. First thing we do is make sure everything's on the correct side. So I need an N2O on the left, and I have N2Os on the left. I need NO2s on the left, and currently my NO2 is on the right, so I'm going to flip this second reaction and multiply by negative 1. And I need NOs on the right, and I have NOs on the right. I have lots of NOs on the right. Okay. So now I go through and I make sure everything's got the correct number. So I need one N2O, but I have two. So I'm going to divide everything in this reaction by two. I need one NO2, but I have two of them. So again, I multiply, I'm sorry, dividing everything by two. And I need three NOs on the right. Now I have two NOs here, plus one NO gives me my three NOs. So now I have the correct number of everything. Go back to red. Now I'm going to cancel out everything that appears on both sides of the reaction. So I've got one N2 here, one N2 there. One O2 here, one half plus a half is a whole N2. So sometimes you can cancel more than one at a time. And then I circle everything that's left, and I get N. I have NO2 plus N2O yields 2NO plus 1NO is 3NOs. Is it the same? Yes. Even though these two are backwards, it doesn't change the reaction. It's the exact same reaction. So, my delta H will be the delta H for reaction 1 plus negative 1 half the delta H for reaction 2 plus the delta H for reaction 3 divided by 2. Pull out my calculator and I get 180 Point seven plus negative point five times negative one one three point one plus negative one sixty three point two divided by two and it's one fifty five point six five. I'm not really concerned about sig figs here. Just don't go buck wild with them. Okay, it says, is the overall reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, it's a positive delta H, and positive means endothermic. 
Okay, now let's see just a straight up enthalpy problem, not Hess's law whatsoever. This one involves grams. So it says, is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, again, the delta H is negative. Negative implies a loss, so it is exothermic. Okay. If 1.25 grams of NO is converted completely to NO2, what quantity of heat is absorbed or evolved? Now remember that enthalpy is a ratio. Okay, so I'm looking in this particular case of NO. So it is a ratio of negative 114.1 kilojoules comes out of two moles of nitrogen, uh, nitri nitrogen monoxide. They want to know how much heat will come out of 1.25 grams. Well, since my ratio is in terms of moles, I've got to convert my 1.25 grams to moles. So I'll go 1.25 grams of NO. The only reason I'm using NO is basically because it told me to. It says it gave me the information about NO, so I'm going to use NO. So 14 plus 16 is, I'm sorry, 14.01 plus 16 is 30.01 grams. Do my quick mole conversion, 1.25 divided by 30.01 is 0 0.0417. Okay, cross multiply, solve for x times negative 114.1 divided by 2 is negative 238. 2.38 kilojoules per mole. Nice and simple, just involves ratios. Okay, now let's do, tackle a couple of thermodynamics problems. It says, which of the following is true for the sublimation of solid carbon dioxide at room temperature and pressure? Okay, now there's two ways to look at this problem. One, if you remember what sublimation is, sublimation means solid goes directly to gas without passing through the liquid phase. Okay, now we know that when we change from solid to gas, we are increasing in disorder. So that process involves a positive delta S. Now let's say you didn't know what sublimation is. But you know that carbon dioxide is not a solid at room temperature. Well, if you know it's not a solid at room temperature, you know it's a gas, well, that you know that this solid is going to be changing into gas and will be increasing disorder. So let's look at this. I have an increase in disorder. Let's go through and see what does not work. Well, this one says delta S is negative, so that's out. Okay, A is possible, B, a C is possible. Delta G becomes more positive as temperature increases. Delta G is positive. Well, I can't identify that right now, so I'm going to come back to that. Now let's think about the process of changing from solid into gas. Does that involve heat? Okay, well, let's think about this. Does heat have to go in to melt something or to evaporate something? Yes. Heat has to go in to turn something from a solid to a liquid and from a liquid to a gas. Remember, it's got to overcome those intermolecular forces. So if, if heat is going in, that means it is endothermic. That means delta H is positive. So that eliminates C. Okay? Now, I'm left with three choices. Right now, A is looking like my best option, but I want to double check D and E. Okay. Now, delta G becomes more positive as temperature increases. Is this a non-spontaneous process? Well, since we know that carbon dioxide likes to be a gas at room temperature, it's probably not going to take any work to make it happen, which means it's definitely not going to become more, um, it's definitely not going to require more work. And if it doesn't require more work, then it's not going to require any work. And so A is my best choice. Okay, I could also go back to this formula and say, well, my enthalpy, I've got positive, a positive, and this, okay? Because it is endothermic, so, and entropy is increasing. So could this be a situation? Yes, this could be the situation I'm talking about, but it's not that delta G becomes more positive because it is not positive yet. But the po point is, I can't prove this one. This is not my best answer here. Okay, so, um, and actually, if you look at this, as T goes up, I'm subtracting a bigger number, so in actuality, this doesn't even work, so it all cancels out. 
okay? Because delta G is spontaneous uh, for this process. Okay, last one. When potassium nitrate dissolves in water at room temperature, the delta H is positive for the dissolution process. Dissolution means dissolving. Okay. Given this information, what can you conclude? Delta G is greater than zero for the dissolution process, which means spontaneous. Delta G is negative for the dissolution. I'm sorry. That means non-spontaneous. This uh, delta G is negative, spontaneous. Dissolving of salts and water is always a spontaneous process. Be careful of that word. I'll get to that in a second. Delta S is greater than zero for the dissolution process. Delta S is less than zero for the dissolution process. Okay, let's think about dissolving. When I dissolve, I take a solid and I break it up into its ions, if it's an ionic compound, in the water and its parts float all over a place and become aqueous. Okay, if I'm breaking stuff up, what's happening to its disorder? Yeah, its disorder is increasing. It's going to be positive. So it can't be E. Right now, right off the bat, it's looking like D. But let's think about this. Is this spontaneous? Well, can I prove that it is? Not exactly, because I'll say to you this. Does salt dissolve in water if it's really, really cold? Not really. You kind of have to do work to make salt dissolve in really, really cold water. If it was really, really hot water, would it dissolve? Oh, yeah, there's no question. So the point is here, if I can think of one example in which this doesn't work, my answers are out. So is this non-spontaneous? Well, if it's hot, this is this is definitely spontaneous, so this is out. If it's cold, it's definitely not spontaneous, so that's out. And it says the dissolving of salts and water is always a spontaneous process. Never, ever make absolute statements. Okay. If you see that word always, you know that's out. And so my best ch choice here is D. Now, what does the delta H tell me? The delta H tells me that it's endothermic. So in other words, the um, when the potassium nitrate dissolves in water, the water gets cold, and the water transfers heat to the potassium nitrate. So the potassium nitrate itself is getting warmer, so it's endothermic, but the water itself is decreasing in temperature. It's a problem when you have like things dissolving, because you have two things going on. You have the water interacting with the potassium nitrate, so you have to look at it from both perspectives. So because the potassium nitrate is gaining heat, its delta H is positive, but that doesn't tell me anything about the actual process. All it tells me is that it is positive, it's endothermic. It doesn't tell me if it's spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Okay? And those are some examples on how to do thermodynamics problems.